Hi, uh, Vision OS 2 has dropped uh, in a whisper rather than a shout as far as I'm concerned. The only reason I knew that it had come out was the fact that um, I've been googling since I knew the beta has been going and obviously iOS 18 dropped on Monday and I thought it might. I didn't see any big announcements so you may not know it's, it's, it's out. The beta has been around for a while but that's mainly developers that would be using that. So I just wanted to very briefly talk you through some of the key changes um, and what they mean to the typical user. So, and I thought I'd use the, the new persona uh, to, to do this. Um, I don't know that it looks much better, it's apparently it's it, apparently it looks better. One of the big changes um, when you're using Persona for likes of FaceTime is if you're in a FaceTime on a Vision Pro with someone who's on a Vision Pro you actually see their head and shoulders floating in space rather than in a window. I think that'll make a big difference to um, the interaction that you might be able to get using Vision Pro. So, um, but on to the main difference. The main difference is in um, navigation so where before to get the home screen you would press the digital crown which still works um, and to get control panel you would look up um, which I, I don't think works anymore um, to get the home screen now you rotate your hand and a little button appears uh, so you rotate your hand press the button home screen appears that's that simple um, rotate your hand press the button the home screen disappears so um, the other thing is you take your hand, bring it back and this little thing appears and it's a little status bar which shows uh, you can see the time, volume, uh, Wi-Fi signal, battery strength and if in, if in this zone if you press and hold this becomes a volume control. Um, otherwise if you tap you get this little panel that uh, shows you various things like your notification center, the fact I'm recording, uh, turns on and off the Mac virtual display, allows you to change the environment settings but only time of day and volume obviously a little bit of status and the link to the control panel so I press this I get the main control panel. Nothing changed here um, other than the guest user. Uh, previously if you wanted to have a guest user every time you took your headset off and give it to the other person um, they had to go through the retina scan and uh, basically set it up for their use now what happens is it stores the more the most recent guest user um, so i guess that's if you live with someone or have a partner who uh, every now and then you you you're allowed to use the vision pro it, it, I'm assuming it automatically sets up for them. I'm also assuming because it does a retina scan, it knows it's them. And if it's not them, you would have to do the real the real scan. I'd need to find out about that. Another change in Vision OS 2 is the hand tracking. Um, there were some issues apparently if people played fast-paced VR games, games that rely on, on fast hand tracking. Apparently there were some, some issues that the hand tracking wasn't good enough. I believe it was sampling at too slow a rate. <clears throat> uh, my understanding is now the hand tracking has increased quite dramatically. I only play really one game and I have noticed that the hand tracking on it, the hand uh, tracking on it has made a, quite a big difference. It has however, the, the navigation however has caused another problem. So let me just show you what that is all about. So the game is Demio. So it'll be a bit, bit loud when it starts but uh, I'll skip through that. So in this game, you navigate around the board using these wonderful gloves. And one of the things I've noticed is before Vision OS 2, this, this movement was quite glitchy, but now it's, it's not, it's really good. Um, so you pinch and hold to move the board around, double pinch to zoom in and out, um, to, to pick up a character, you just look at them and pinch, pick it up. It, what I've noticed however, the characters have ability cards which you reveal by turning your hand. And what I noticed when I was playing it last night is when I turned 
that here the, the 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 home screen widget would appear so that when I turned and looked at the card and pinched instead of picking up the card I activated the home screen uh, so imagine I go like that look at the card pinch and instead of what happens oh there it is there so now if I try and pick this card I can accidentally activate the home screen so it takes me out of the game now I can go back into the game but it's quite annoying to do that every time and it was happening a lot last night um, I'll do a fuller review on this game at some other point uh, but that that was an, quite an annoying thing about the hand tracking another change that comes with Vision OS 2 is that the, the app the Vision Pro can be a, an AirPlay receiver and what that means is I can use my phone and go to AirPlay and I'll see nothing why is oh, I'll see the Apple Vision Pro uh, and what that means is I can get my phone now and I'll get my phone. Now, it's not interactive. I can't look at these, no, nothing's happening. It's just AirPlayed. So if I want to look at, um, if I want to look at Instagram on my phone, rather than doing anything here, I would have to have my phone and, and start Instagram. Um, it's not, what it's for is, sometimes when I'm using my Vision Pro, I'm sitting here, maybe for an hour or two, my phone's here, and there are certain things that I can only do on my phone for example there's no messenger app on Vision Pro so but also if I get an alert on my phone I, I can't I can't always see what it is depending on what I'm doing but if I have my phone here if I get an alert um, I can I can see it quickly um, look at the beautiful sunshine that's coming today uh, so that's a big change um, big Probably uh, one of the biggest changes that people's talking about with Vision Pro is some changes to the, the Mac virtual display. I have zero interest in the Mac virtual display because I don't have a, a Mac. Um, it really it really bugs me how much focus has been put on it. A, a lot of the, the videos you see about how good the Vision Pro is, it's good because what you're doing is actually using your Mac through your Vision Pro. Um, so you see people editing wonderful videos on Final Cut Pro um, but it's running on their Mac so either give us Final Cut Pro properly on the Vision Pro or give us some um, virtual display for, for, for other avid, for PCs or, or even virtual display for the iPad I have an M4 iPad which is probably it, certainly when it was released um, Apple's most powerful um, processor and if I plug it into an external display, I can go up. I can get massive resolution. I believe I can use the app, the Apple's 5.7K display. Um, but I can't do a virtual display on it. Um, Apple needs to sort this out. Um, I, it's possible that they don't want to do it because they want to differentiate between the iPad and the Mac. Um, but that's no way to do this. So give me give me at least iPad virtual display or even PC virtual display. So another chain is in the Photos app. You can take a normal photograph and these are the four, repro four reprobates that were at the climbing hangar last week and you're pressing this little button that scans it, creates a depth match, creates a depth map and then turns it into virt uh, a virtual and turns it into a spatial video, uh, and then turns it into a spatial photo. Now I know from having watched previous videos, this doesn't look any difference to you. What different? What to you watching the video? But to me, it gives it real depth. Um, so the ability to take normal photographs and turn them into spatial photographs, I think it's incredible. Another change is that we have a new environment. Uh, we got like Wrangler earlier in the year and now we have Bora Bora. As an aside, I've noticed that these little icons now are now 3D. 
Obviously you won't see that on the video, but uh, they definitely weren't 3D before, I'm fairly sure. Uh, anyone who knows for sure can tell me, but now it's like you're looking through a little window into the environment. So we have Bora Bora. Uh, I'll turn Bora Bora on. And I've got a beautiful turn environment down so that I'm sure I could see. So if you look in the distance, on this mountain you can see clouds moving slowly, palm trees blowing in the wind. If I stand up, I turn round, you can see I've got the beach to myself. Obviously I'm unlocking any fears you might have about something coming out the woods to get you. Um, as usual, I look down what I'm surprised is that I can't see my feet. The, uh, one of the changes to the environment is if you have a, an Apple keyboard, it now appears through the environment. I never found that a problem. But yeah, beautiful. It's uh, very idyllic, very relaxing to work in. Obviously at night, this is what it looks like. Now don't get me wrong, it's beautiful. And if I was working in the evening, maybe on a late flight, um, that would be good. But I find for watching content, this is too bright. If I start Apple TV, the slow horses. Put the volume down, uh, but put it in the environment. Uh, you'll see. I think this bright background is no good. Um, it's a beautiful environment, but not for watching content. Now, compared to, for example, uh, Mount Hood, which is my favourite environment to watch in. Mount Hood's a fantastic environment to watch in, I think. Uh, it's interesting, it puts the screen in a different place, in different environments. Anyway, so that's, um, that's one of the changes. Now, another change to environments, which is interesting, is if I close that and open Safari. Uh, Safari now, if I go to Netflix, I watch something on Netflix, I can now, and I'm not sure how I do it, when I go full screen, I now have the environment, the option to go into the environment. Now that was, that's new, uh, previously you could only view it in a window, but now, but now videos on Netflix or YouTube can be viewed in the environment, which is excellent. Last and very much least uh, for me are a couple of changes, uh, a couple of changes, one which is in travel mode. Um, now in travel mode you have the option to pick train. I don't know what used to happen if you were trying to travel by train and you use travel mode. For those that don't know, if you try and use the Vision Pro while you're travelling, that it doesn't it, it gets very confused because the windows lock in space and if the what it sees around it doesn't appear to be moving but the gyros tell it the the vision pro is moving it gets very confused so there's been a travel mode that works i believe with cars and and i believe works with airplanes now you have a, an option for train don't know what the difference is um, but i haven't used it traveling so that's uh, not important so anyway that's it uh, Vision OS 2 uh, finally out. Um, if you're not a developer, you've probably been waiting for it for a long time. Um, some interesting changes, some not so interesting changes. Hopefully, there's a lot going on under the hood. It definitely, when I've been using it, feels um, a bit. It definitely feels better when I'm using it. Um, I like the new navigation. Hopefully, this is just the beginning. But Apple, get it sorted. Either allow us to do PC virtual display or at least iPad virtual display. So if you don't have it, if you've got a Vision Pro and you haven't downloaded it yet, you know where to go. Download it. And well, maybe you don't know where to go. It will be in, if you, if you look in general, that's where it will be. So download it and give it a bash. Uh, 
I'm going to do a video on my experience after a few months of using the Apple Vision Pro. Uh, look out for that. Thanks. Bye.